Hello, so I wanted to do this type of video for quite a while, uh, and I might continue to do the videos, uh, these types of videos more uh, on verses that are taken out of context, but we'll see how this first one goes and we'll go from there. Uh, so this video will center on one passage that I see taken out of context all the time. Uh, and what do I mean by that? Well, whenever I do videos like this and whenever I wrote papers in college, I always liked to define my terms. Uh, it kind of helps set the stage and it helps fill out at least two paragraphs for your paper. So there's your tip for writing papers. Define your terms, it takes up a lot of space. So I want to define what we mean by context. And I think the simplest way to do that is to just look it up. <laughs> if you Google context right now, this is the definition you would get. Context is the circumstances that form the setting for an event, statement, or idea, and in terms of which it can be fully understood and assessed. So to fully understand, to, meaning to, to fully wrap our minds around and properly and correctly apply the idea or statement, we need to have context. And context is the information around the setting in which the idea was presented. So let's do a quick exercise about why context is important. Let's look at John 10, 27 through 28. Jesus is speaking and he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. Now, we are most likely already equipped with some level of context for this passage, but if you were to take it out of context, it looks like Jesus is talking about sheep. Literal sheep. But of course, Jesus wasn't talking about literal sheep. He was, uh, we know that, and we know that because of the context. Context, like Jesus wasn't a shepherd. Uh, he didn't interact with sheep. He was a carpenter he, and then a rabbi. But if you rip that verse out of its context, it's not that hard to twist it and say that Jesus was just a shepherd looking to protect his sheep. Now, that I know that that's a silly example, and no one is really arguing that Jesus was secretly a shepherd and a, a shepherd of literal physical sheep. But I use that as an example to illustrate a point. If you don't have the proper context, it's easy both to intentionally and unintentionally remove a verse from its context and as a result, come up with a totally different meaning. So for this video, I want to focus on a verse that, if you've been involved with the church for any length of time, you're probably pretty familiar with, and it gets taken out of context all the time. Uh, seriously, I probably I probably hear this verse taken out of context at least once a week. It's, it's posted on Facebook, shared in podcasts, sermons, messages to me. It's shared all over the place. And the verse I want to look at today is Matthew 11, 30. Again, this is Jesus speaking. And he says, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Sometimes the verse is quoted on its own. And sometimes they include verse 28, which says, come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And after reading the verse, I'm sure you're able to picture all the times that you too have seen this passage get tossed around. Uh, it's kind of the go-to verse for comforting someone. Someone who had a bad day or a fight with their spouse or they're, they're worn out in their job or they have exams coming up or oh, whatever it may be. If there's a hard situation, this is one of those go-to verses for Christians to kind of toss out as a quick solution. But there is a problem with us doing that. When we just share this verse as a quick solution and infer that Jesus is talking about our jobs or relationships or anything like that, we completely miss the point in the full context of this passage. Do we even know what Jesus is talking about here? If we're going to apply a promise of Jesus, we better do our best to ensure that we understand that the promises we are relaying to someone actually apply to their situation. So here's what I want to submit to you. And I can back this up with proper exegetical context of this passage. When Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light, he is not talking about your life, your job, your relationships, your health, your finances, or anything like that. Jesus is not promising that your life will be easy, that your life will magically get better, that things will get easier, and that after committing your life to Christ, you will just find yourself cruising through life with no obstacles. Instead, here is what I believe Jesus is saying. When Jesus said that his burden is light, he is referring to life of the Son of God in contrast to the life tied to the religious legalism that was so prevalent at that time. The burden of Christ is this. He did all the work for you. You just say yes, and bam, you're in. You're transformed, created to be the child of God that you were made to be. But the life of someone under the law is heavy and hard, and you're constantly being evaluated and evaluating others. You'll never measure up. Even the best people fall short of the standard of the law. So in contrast to that, 
the yoke of Jesus is easy, right? Now, how do I know that this is what Jesus is talking about when he comes to verse 30? Well, that should be our first clue. If you're looking at your Bible, you'll see that verse 30 comes at the end of the chapter. Like, right at the very end of the chapter. So there's an entire chapter of context that needs to be included when you interpret this verse. And that's not even really including the context from everything before the chapter. Remember that the verse and chapter markers are modern inventions for the Bible. When the Gospel of Matthew was originally written, it was written just how you and I would write letters or emails. I don't include chapter or paragraph markers in my emails, and neither did the authors of the Bible. So let's look at this chapter and see what kind of clues we can get for the context. So the chapter starts with messengers from John the Baptist coming to Jesus. For context, John the Baptist was in prison at this time, but his followers would still check in and support him. Uh, that's what you needed at that time. If you were in prison, you didn't get three meals a day and time out in the yard. You were basically in the dungeon. And if you wanted any food, someone like a family member or a friend had to bring it to you. So when John's followers were visiting him, he told them to go visit Jesus and ask if he was the Messiah. And Jesus, in a somewhat roundabout way, confirms that. And then Jesus begins to speak to the crowds about John the Baptist. He praises him and kind of condemns the people who mocked John. If you don't know anything about the John the Baptist, he was kind of a weirdo. <laughs> he was ragged, had overgrown hair, wore weird clothes, ate weird foods. And so people spoke of him as a drunkard and a glutton. And yet Jesus praises him. And then we get to verse 20 where Jesus begins to denounce the cities where people didn't repent even though he performed miracles. He compares them to Tyre and Sidon or Tyre and Sidon, which were known in Jewish cultures as these cities of great sin. And yet these cities are denounced even more than Tyre and Sidon, because Jesus says if he performed miracles there, they would have repented. And now down to verse 25, I want to read 25 through 30 so that you can hear the surrounding verses for the specific verse that we're referencing today. At that time, Jesus declared, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let's look at what's happening here in this chapter. Jesus denounces the cities Chorazin and Bethsaida for not repenting when he performed miracles in their cities. But then in verse 25, he thanks God, the Father, for hiding these things meaning hiding the true identity of who he is, the Son of God, from them. He says, thank you that you have hidden these things, meaning the things that he was speaking about from the wise and the understanding, but revealing them to, little, to the little children. Now again, context is key here. Is Jesus saying that only little kids know who he is and that the, that the wise have no hope of understanding? No, of course not. And this is confirmed by what he says in the following verse. Verse 26 says, these things were hidden from some and revealed to others according to the gracious will of the Father. Verse 27 says, No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Meaning you only get to know God the Father, you only get to be in relationship with God when the Son chooses to reveal him to you. So there are some who have this information hidden from them, and that's a decision, according to the Bible, made by the Father and the Son. So with these cities, there is information that is being hidden from them regarding salvation and who Jesus is. And before we get to the next passage that contains our verse, which is so commonly taken out of context, we need to extract a little more context from what Jesus is saying about these cities. For context, it's important to understand where these cities are located. These are not pagan cities located in Egypt or Greece or anywhere like that. Chorazin and Bethsaida are located just north of the Sea of Galilee. These are cities, or more likely small towns, in Israel. So these cities were part of the people of Israel. They knew God. They knew his word. They practiced his law. We tend to hear denunciations like this from Jesus and think, oh, wow, they must have been sacrificing infants or something. Nope. These were Israelites, and they knew God, but they didn't know God. This is a common thing among the Gospels, specifically Matthew, and many of the New Testament letters from Paul, that the law is a heavy burden. In fact, according to Paul, the whole purpose of the law is to show our sin and how you can never measure up. 
If you read all of Romans, that's the message. The law will show your sin, and the cross is bigger than your sin. That's my TLDR for Romans. But if you want to get specific, look at Romans 3. A lot of talk about the law in this chapter. And if you look at verse 19 and 20, you can see Paul's explanation of the law. Uh, starting at verse 19. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law... No human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. The law holds you accountable to God and gives you the knowledge of your sin. The law does not save you. Knowledge of the law doesn't save you. It can't. It can only convict and point a flashlight at your sin. That's a heavy burden. And that's what the people of Chorazin and Bethsaida were experiencing. They were a people under the burden of the law and they didn't even want to leave it they saw jesus they experienced him they saw the works that he could do and they said nah we're good as we are we like our heavy burden and jesus response to that starts in verse 28 come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest in your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light and for those of you who know Christ, isn't that a true and accurate description of what your life is in Christ? Do you remember the fear and anxiety that came with that performance mindset? Thinking that you need to measure up or you need to perform in a certain way, and then you'll earn the love of God. But if you miss up, bam, you're back at the bottom of the ladder and you have to work your way back up. Jesus sees that and offers an easier way. He says that his yoke is easy and his burden is light. A yoke usually refers to a wooden cross piece that would be fastened to animals like ox. It would fasten them together so that they could pull a cart or a wagon together. So Jesus says, come under my yoke, attach yourself to me because the load that you will be responsible for pulling is practically non-existent. I'm going to do all the work. You just have to show up. And that's what this passage means in context. We had a heavy burden on our lives, the heaviest burden, heavier than any job stresses or relationship struggles or whatever else may pop up. We were in a position where no matter how hard we tried, we could never measure up. And God stepped in and said, come to me because I've already taken care of it. That's a beautiful message. In fact, that's the gospel. That's the good news. But we can muddy that message up if we start using this verse to, to comfort people who come across hard times in their relationships. We don't want to use this verse to tell people that life as a Christian will be easy because that's not what Jesus is saying. In fact, that's not what Jesus or any of the apostles say anywhere in the Bible. There is amazing hope in this passage, and that is a comfort for the issue that should matter most to us, the state of our soul. And the comfort here is that God has taken care of everything for you. He reveals himself to you. He bears the burden. And as a result, you are given rest. This, is a, th this verse is a comfort for those of us, and I am definitely including myself in this, that feel like we need to perform or meet a certain criteria for God to love us. That's what the legalists in Jesus' time were doing. They were weighed down by the heavy burden of the law, constantly trying to measure up. And God says, come to me. Take on the burden that I give you. It's easy. I love this verse and the message that it sends. But hey, maybe you disagree. Maybe you think my interpretation is wrong. Maybe you think I'm misreading the context. Or maybe you recognize the context, but you think the verse can speak to uh, areas outside of the context. If you have questions like that, comments like that, I would love to hear from you. Please reach out. Share them with me. I would, I would love to continue the discussion. Uh, it makes me sharper. Hopefully it makes you sharper as well. So... Uh, I like this. I think, I think I'm going to keep doing more of these uh, out-of-context passage videos. It's, it's helpful for me. Hopefully it's helpful for you. If you have any suggestions uh, on new verses, feel free to comment and let me know. But as always, thank you for watching. May God bless you, and I'll see you soon.